Hello, Wonder Hussy here at a place called the Mud Thedral. Mud Thedral is basically a portmanteau, which is a fancy way of saying it's two words put together, mud and cathedral. And while looking around, you can definitely see how it got that name. Okay, to get here, we had to sort of hike through this long mud tunnel. It's just a tunnel going through this giant thick layer of dried ancient mud. And the tunnel was pretty dark and narrow at points. But when we came around this corner, it opened up into this sort of natural atrium that's lit from above <laughs> with natural light from that hole up there. And you can see there's trees growing over it up top. So they kind of filter the light and that's why it comes down so pretty and diffused. And well, I guess that's why they call it a mud cathedral because it is like being in a cathedral in a few different ways. I mean, first of all, it's perfectly still. And secondly, this chamber is filled with this beautiful light diffused through the branches of what looks like a mesquite tree. Isn't that cool? These mesquite trees uh, are just growing right over the opening to this mud cathedral. And if you were walking along the ground up top and you didn't know that hole was there, well, you'd be liable to fall right through. And well, I'm guessing it's probably like a 20 foot drop. So you gotta be careful walking around the desert because you never know when you'll drop into a mud cathedral. Sorry, I just love that name, mud cathedral. It's sort of like this primal mixture of the ancient and the, well, I was gonna say modern, but I guess medieval. No telling how many animals have fallen through and landed in the mud cathedral over the years. It's really cool though. You can see the roots of that one of those trees up there just coming down the side here. It's like interesting how they grow at such weird right angles, you know, like, look at that. It's almost like stair steps. Far out. And if you continue on past the mud cathedral, this mud tunnel continues onward through more layers of ancient mud and comes out here on the banks of the Amargosa River. This whole area is full of weird mud formations that almost look like coral reefs. You know what I mean? Like there's these weird textures and patterns in the mud. And then there's sand dunes covered in, well, almost like beach grasses. And it's all surrounding this mysterious marsh in the middle of an otherwise parched, barren moonscape. The whole vibe out here is kind of like that of a ghost ocean. And in fact, this whole area actually used to be underwater. Back in the Pleistocene era, about 185,000 years ago, a vast inland sea called Lake Tacopa filled this basin. It was fed by the Amargosa River, which came flowing in from the north and then turned to the west and then back north again to fill another prehistoric sea, Lake Manly, which is now Death Valley's famous or infamous bad water basin. But around 185,000 years ago, something caused the lake to breach its banks, overflow, and then disappear into the surrounding desert leaving behind this vast, mysterious, marshy basin. Today, the Amargosa River still flows along its ancient course, but most of it's now underground, although it does come to the surface in a few places, like right here and back in the canyon at the Mud Thedral. That's what makes this such a unique landscape. It's so surreal to see water and bamboo and reeds in the middle of a desert. You can actually walk out into the marsh on the old grade of what used to be the Tonopah and Tidewater Railroad. This short-lived railroad brought ore from Nevada gold mines down from Tonopah to Ludlow, California but it was abandoned in 1940, leaving behind a ghost railroad along which you can walk through the ghostly remains of an ancient sea. 
or what I like to call the ghost ocean. I like to imagine this ghost ocean filled with ghost whales and ghost sea captains and ghost mermaids. And if you listen closely, you just might hear the sound of ghostly ships passing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> horse, camel, muskrat, and even mammoth fossils have all been unearthed from this ancient lake bed, and they even found footprints in the mud from ancient peoples who used to live here. Matter of fact, if you go over to the Shoshone Museum, you can see an entire mammoth skeleton they dug up here. So it's just a really unique, surreal, and otherworldly landscape. And it's really sad to see all these tire tracks crisscrossing the hills. There's lots of off-road routes in the area where you can ride dirt bikes and ATVs and side-by-sides. But you know how it goes. Most off-roaders are pretty conscientious, but there's always those few bad apples that don't like to stay on the designated trails and would rather blaze their own over these fragile mud hills. <laughs> when I first saw this sign, I thought it was kind of funny. Like, what's the big deal about mud hills? What makes them so fragile? And who cares if people drive over them? But after talking to some locals and learning about the history of this area, I totally get it. I mean, this area sees so little rainfall that it could take hundreds of years for these tire tracks to wash away. And meantime, new tire tracks are being created almost every day. And it does kind of scar the minimalist beauty of this surreal landscape. I can totally understand the thrill of forging a new trail and blazing across the virgin desert. I'm a big off-roader myself. But come on, guys. Don't you see something special about this place? What if all these off-roaders who are ignoring the posted trail signs awakened the ancient spirits of the ghost ocean and they rose from the dead to seek revenge? Imagine a ghostly army of ghostly mermaids and sea captains riding ghostly camels and mammoths waving ghostly spears as they flew across the desert floor in hot pursuit of some ding-dong on a dirt bike. It's curtains for Billy Bob. He drove his ATV over the wrong ancient lake bed and awakened the wrath of the long-dead spirits of the ghost ocean. A terrifying pursuit across an ancient landscape. It's the Revenge of the Sea Ghosts. Spielberg, call me. Anyway, now I can totally understand why they call this the Mud Thedral. I mean, it's totally still, and there's these beautiful rays of sunlight coming in through the ancient mud walls, filtered through the mesquite leaves, almost like a stained glass window in a cathedral. I almost get a mystical feeling here, which is unusual for me because I'm not a spiritual person. But when you touch these mud walls, it's almost like you can feel the spirits of all the ancient creatures who lived here under the ghost sea. Tecopa mud thedral, you're bringing me down. You stood and you watched as my baby left town. Uh.